Hello there, one and all, and this video is all about settlement happiness. There are a lot of myths out there on the internet about um, what increases or decreases happiness in a settlement, and these myths have been allowed to crop up because Bethesda has not been very transparent um, or very communicative about how happiness works. So we're going to go through all of the different myths and debug this and find out what does and what does not contribute to happiness. So first up, dogs. I just, uh, I've got a dog here, as you can see, it's in my cage. And uh, let's see exactly how much happiness a dog will add once it joins your settlement. Now, in order to gauge this correctly, we are using a PC mod called Settlement Management Software. So let's take a look at this. You load the software in a terminal, you go to View Statistics, and you see two metrics. Existing happiness and happiness target. Uh, now, apparently, my happiness was better than it, than it is now. Oh, okay, so what we see here is the game has very specific metrics for determining your settlement happiness, uh, but in game, they only report it in whole numbers. They don't report... Uh, anything less than one. So what will happen, and you've probably experienced this, but what will happen is you'll have happiness of 80.69, and the game will have a hard time deciding which one to show you. Well, do I show them 81? Because if we were to round up, it goes to 81. Or do I show them 80? Because it still is technically only 80. And so the one it does is it goes from 1 to 0, to 1 to 0. When it hits 81, it'll start going back down to 80. When it hits 80, it'll go back up to 81. That's why uh, sometimes you'll make a big change and you think that you're improving your happiness, but the happiness will go down e e even though it's not really going down. It's, it's still staying the same. So anyway, regardless, our happiness target is at 80.69. So basically what, what I'm saying here is that I currently have matched my happiness here. And now we want to see exactly by how much having a dog will improve my happiness. So remember that number, ladies and gentlemen, 80.69. We need to open up this dog crate and see exactly how much happiness we get. And there's our dog. Hello, dog. All right, I'm going to scrap this. Save. Now, in the past when I've tested this, I, do, I did have to fast travel before the happiness registered. So let's see if that's the same case. And no, it, I didn't have to fast travel. So we were at happiness 80.69. Now we're at happiness 80.97, which means by adding a dog, our happiness improved by... 28. So that means each dog adds 0.28 happiness to your settlement, which basically means that it takes four dogs to get 1% happiness for your settlement. All right. So that one is uh, debunked or, or not necessarily debunked. We actually know exactly uh, how that works. So let's take a look at shops. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got ten level four shops in this settlement. Hovering over it, it says that it produces happiness. So I'm going to save. And now, let's remove a shop. Actually, Tell you what, we're going to unassign the settler that's assigned to that shop. That's what we're going to do. And the reason we're going to do it this way is because by removing a resource, you don't remove the assignment of the settler. It's a bug. It's a bug in Fallout 4. And sometimes if you remove the resource, the settler will still remain assigned to it, which messes things up. So you can tell a shop in here by it says that the settler's status is working. It's different from being unassigned. It's also different from scavenging and from collecting food. The ones that are set to working means that they're set to, to manning shops. 
So I'm going to select the settler and I'm going to unassign it. And that will unassign it from the shop. Now it also unassigns it from the bed. And beds, I do think, um, decrease happiness. So we may need to fast travel and fast travel back before we get accurate data. So anyway, uh, let's go see which one of our shops it was that was... Here, you already see that, it, that it's pointing down. It says 81 going down. Okay, let's see. Which one of the shops did it, it unassign? It was this one, the Clothing Emporium. Okay, so it did work. It is unassigned. Let's see if the game has already calculated our new happiness. And if not, I'm going to have to fast travel away and come back to get the accurate number. It says 80.14. I'm concerned that that might also include the fact that it unassigned the settler from the bed and we have to wait for the settler to go back to the bed. So uh, I'm going to fast travel away and fast travel back really quickly and then we'll, we'll check again. All right, we're back in the Warwick homestead. Let's uh, race on over here and see what our happiness is at. When we left it was at uh, 80.14. And let's see if they've reassigned the bed by now. Yeah, it's still at 80.14, so seven. So if, if this calculation is accurate, then it means that each level four shop is worth 0.77 happiness. So almost an entire percentage. So significantly more happiness with a shop than, uh, than uh, uh, with a dog. Let's try some of the different levels of shops, okay? Let's try a, well, let's, let's be consistent. So this was a clothing shop and it was 0.77 happiness. Let's try a tier two clothing shop. And let's assign an unassigned settler to it. Remember, we were at 80.14, and here we are experiencing a glitch. This glitch happens sometimes where you'll assign an, an unassigned settler to a resource, and sometimes it takes a long time for the game to process the assignment. So I'm going to run around until the game actually processes the assignment. Hopefully it won't be very long. There it is, this resource is now assigned, okay. So now that the resource is assigned, let's see if we got a nice uh, happiness bump. And if not, we may need to fast travel before we, we get it. All right, we, we jumped all the way back up to 80.97. So 83 happiness. 0.83 happiness. So, so far we've discovered that a tier four, I'm sorry, a, a tier three shop and a tier two shop, they provide the exact same amount of happiness, at least when it comes to clothing shops. And that's 0.83 happiness. Now, of course, we need to try a tier level one shop. And Let's make, let's make sure it's a clothing shop so that we're consistent. There we go. A tier level one, and I'll take you and assign you. Got it. Looks like it's, t it's taking a long time for the resource to become assigned. Um, I'm just gonna run around until it gets assigned. There it is, this resource is now assigned, finally. Okay, let's uh, head on back. Whoa, whoa, move ladies. All right, 81.19. So we were at 97, 80.97. <clears throat> so it gained 22. So it gained only 42.42. .42. Point four two. All right, so there we are, ladies and gentlemen. We have learned that 
tier level one shops give you, at least the clothing shops, give you 0.42 happiness. Tier level two shops give you 0.83 happiness. And tier level four shops also give you 0.83 happiness. So this is great news for you because if you're primarily concerned with the happiness of your settlements, then that means that you only need to build tier two shops instead of tier three shops uh, because the tier two shops are gonna be cheaper, much cheaper than the, uh, than the other shops. Right, let's dispel some more myths. So in the past when I've been trying to research how to keep my settlement happy and, and what causes unhappiness, I read a lot of wonky things. And one of the things that I read is that if you place really noisy things like turrets and engines around where your settlers spend their time, like where they sleep and where they tend to congregate, that can actually decrease your happiness. And I've become increasingly suspicious of this over... Whoa, wow, what is going on right now? Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm getting a huge FPS issue. Sorry for the interruption there, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I <clears throat> had a computer problem and I had to fix something, but yes. I'm, uh, I'm right back where I started. <clears throat> and um, anyway, as I was saying, there are a lot of people on the internet who are saying that yes. yeah. en engine noise, generator noise, and turret noise can affect happiness negatively. And so that you shouldn't put generators or missile turrets or anything noisy near where your settlers sleep or spend a lot of time. So, that leaves us with only one solution to test this myth. And that is to put a bunch of really noisy generators all over the place where these guys sleep. where they spend time. Super noisy. All right, what else is noisy? Turrets. <laughs> noisy turrets. Okay. Yes, we have improved defense, but we have a noisy situation. So let's take a look at our happiness. Eighty one point nineteen. So it hasn't changed. Remember, we had just gotten to 81.19 because we added that other shop. Now, just to rule out the possibility that it takes a while, I'm gonna fast travel and fast travel back. Back we are in the Warwick Homestead. And let's take a look at our happiness. Holy mother of frame rates. Eighty-one point nineteen. All right, I think that confirms it, ladies and gentlemen. Noisy items in your settlement do not harm your happiness. They just don't. I mean, we fast traveled away. We waited for a long period of time, uh, and nothing is changing. And I do want to make one distinction very clear. So just, just f for those who don't understand the difference, yes. The, the happiness that is displayed in your shop or in your workbench, see right now it says 82 and it says it's going down, that happiness changes slowly over time. But what this mod does is it shows you where your happiness is going. So when you make, whoops, didn't mean to do that. When you make any change to your settlement, Bethesda does the math and figures out, okay, well based on these changes, their end happiness will be, you know, 
81.19. But they don't make that change effective immediately. It takes a while for your happiness to crawl up there. And yet you can still detect what your end target happiness will be. And that's what we're measuring this against right now, ladies and gentlemen. We're measuring against the target happiness, not the, the happiness that we're at right now. Okay, and the other um, quote-unquote myth that I want to debunk is that adding posters and wall hangings and decorations can help improve your happiness. So we're at 81.19. I'm just going to put a bunch of stuff on the wall and test to make sure Holy mother frame rates. Oh my gosh, why is this so laggy? I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, oh, I, geez, I just don't understand why it's so laggy. All right, I'm just gonna move away from this area. Maybe that's what it is, yeah. It's still horrible, I'm getting 40, 50. Okay, it's starting to crawl up there. I guess it's that one shack over there, so I'm gonna do my best to stay away from that one shack. Okay, so photos, pictures, pictures on the wall. And let's uh, let's get some some ground covering here. Okay. Now check our happiness. Eighty-one point nineteen. And I'm going to fast travel away and come back just to make sure that we do it the right way. Uh, we seem to be going from storm to storm, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Which is killer on my frame rates while I'm recording for some reason. Thought I fixed my problem, but apparently not. And we're still at 81.19. All right. So that pretty much settles it. All right, let's debunk some more myths. So uh, even reading some popular online guides will say that TVs and radios will improve your settlement's happiness. So let's build some TVs and radios. All right, I placed all of the different kinds of TVs. I've got a jukebox, it's activated. I've got the radio, it's turned on. And let's go take a look at our happiness. Eighty-one point nineteen, no change whatsoever. And just to make sure that we're consistent, let's fast travel. Eighty-one point nineteen, Bubkiss. All right, I'm actually going to remove a lot of the stuff that I placed recently because my my FPS is tanking, and I do believe it's because I've added a ton of stuff to the settlement. So I'm going to clean up a little bit, and let's go on to the next experiment. Okay, things are a little better. So let's uh, let's dispel the next myth. And the next myth is that unassigned settlers drag down your happiness. Now, we can't test this myth by assigning a settler to something that improves happiness, like a shop. So let's build something that doesn't improve happiness, like a scavenging station. And let's find an, a settler to assign. Okay. And we wait for it to kick in. All right, and I just saw, just saw the sign. So let's go and check. Eighty point six four. That's less. What? Doesn't make any sense. 
80.64. Yeah, our settler is assigned. 80.64. It went down by a certain percentage. Well, um, let's see if we can replicate this. Does assigning a settler to another resource make it go down? Let's try again. Maybe our settlers really enjoy their leisure time. And they're happiest when they're just lounging around. I really hate this bug that makes me wait until the game sees fit to assign the resource. All right, let's wait. There it is. Uh, let's see here. Eighty-one point nineteen. All right. Um, I'm a little confused because, oh, I know what's going on. Okay. Um, sorry it took me so long to figure this out. Let me explain. So whenever you reassign a settler, uh, Bethesda forces the settler to disassign itself from the previous things it was assigned to and reassign itself to the new thing. But the problem is that this also works for beds. So every settler is assigned yes. to a bed. But when you reassign your settler to a different task, the game unassigns it from everything, including beds, while it waits to reassign it to the new task. So what happened is I assigned an unassigned settler to my scrapping station. Bethesda then unassigns the, 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 yes. the, the settler from the bed, yes. and then processes a bit before reassigning it to the scavenging station and a new bed. So sometimes there's a bit of a, a lag when it'll have assigned it to the workshop, but it still hasn't assigned it to the bed. And during that time, your target happiness is gonna go down. But now that we've let plenty of time go by for both of my new settlers to be assigned to not only the scavenging stations, but for the game to auto assign them to the new beds, we go back to our happiness, our happiness target of 81.19. Um, so this tells us that unassigned settlers do not harm your happiness target, which dispels another myth. You do not have to have all of your settlers assigned. Unassigned settlers do not drag down your happiness. And that actually surprises me. I thought that it was the other way around. I thought you had to have um, assigned settlers to improve your happiness. But we just learned something here. Okay. Now let's experiment with beds. And I think this is going to be straightforward for all of us because every time we've got a happiness problem, it's usually due to beds. But um, I've got 36 beds and 36 settlers, and they're all assigned to a bed. So by removing one bed, I'm guaranteed to, un to unassign one settler from that bed. So let's see what happens. All right, so clearly the system updates. It says that I do not have enough beds. Let's see how that impacts our happiness. Eighty point six four. So it significantly negatively impacts your your happiness. It goes down by nearly a percentage point, not quite a percentage point because we were at eighty one point nineteen. So um, you know what? Just to be safe, I'm gonna fast travel to make sure that this happiness goes down as far as it can by removing one bed. All right, we're back. Let's find out. Eighty point eight. All right. So that means that losing one bed for one of your settlers removes over an entire percentage point. Okay. Now let's let's uh, let's remove six food. So I'm gonna find one of my settlers that's working on food, Roger Warwick. Let's unassign him.
Okay, so if this worked correctly, we should have less than 36 food. And exactly, we have 30 food. So we have exactly six less food than we did previously. Let's see how that impacted our happiness. Eighty point eight does not make sense. Um, okay, let's do a couple of things. Let's make sure that the workshop is empty of all food, and then let's fast travel. And the results are eighty point eight. I don't get it. 80.8 .8 is where we went to after removing one bed. But removing six food doesn't remove your ha doesn't reduce your happiness. I mean, look. We only have 30 food. But we have 36 people. All right, let's remove another person. Who, who let's let's see what'll happen if we keep removing people. I mean, we can do this up to 6 times. Statistics, 80.64, it went up? <laughs> That's, uh, what? <laughs> Something's messed up here. This isn't making any sense. Let's make sure I did this right. Yes, we now have 24 food. We have 24 food and it says it went up? Eighty point six four. It was at eighty point eight just a moment ago, and now it's at eighty point six four. The only thing I can think of is that another myth I heard is that the happiness of the settlement goes up if you, the player character, are in the town, and that might explain why this jumped up by by over fifty points. Well, let's just remove all of our settlers who are farming for food. All right, there we have it. All of our settlers are unassigned from food. Let's just verify. The settlement has zero food. Seventy nine point five three. Okay. Well, it's starting to finally go down. I'm gonna fast travel real quick to see if that clutches it. I'm just so hungry all the time. All right, my settlers are complaining about hunger. Let's see if our happiness has finally gone down. It seems to be le <coughs> leveling out there, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I fast traveled all the way to Vault 111, and then fast traveled back. That's over 24 hours in game, and uh, the happiness target is staying pretty steady at 79.53. So removing all of the food in the settlement only removes reduces your happiness by about one, whereas removing one bed will reduce your happiness by one. So, that's pretty shocking. Okay, the other myth that I've heard is that larger settlements tend to be happier. The myth I've heard is that settlements that have over 20 people are happier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait until night. Then we're gonna go on a killing spree. Am I ever glad to see you? We could really use a hand. All right. <clears throat> it's the dead of night. All of the settlers are going to sleep. 
let's wait till they're in bed and go on a killing spree. I say let's kill about 20 of them. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. What just happened? Shit, you're still here? All right, I reverted to an old save. Uh, basically what happened is <clears throat> I started killing off my settlers and then they attacked me and no matter what I did, I could never satiate my settlers again. So I went in and I checked my settlement happiness. And my, my settlement happiness is at 30.33. And it's an imperfect experiment because I don't know if the happiness tanked because they lost members of the settlement. That is, I don't know if the happiness was so low because it was such a small settlement or if the happiness was so low because I killed everybody and I just bruised morale or something like that. So I'm not sure why this settlement happiness went down so low. And so I'm hesitant to say that it's confirmed or busted, that having a large settlement makes your settlers happier. I just don't know the answer to that one because I don't know if there's a way that I can experiment with that without manually moving settlers to a different settlement, which I can't do because all my other settlements are full. So killing them was really the only option. Anyway, uh, we still learned a lot. We learned that junkyard dogs raise your happiness by this amount. We learned that level three or tier three stores raise your happiness by this amount. We learned that tier 2 stores raise your happiness by this amount and that tier 1 stores raise your happiness by this amount. We learned that all of the other things we've heard, adding decorations, adding TVs, radios, and jukeboxes, none of those are true. We learned that it doesn't matter if all of your settlers are assigned to a task or not. Having unassigned settlers will not harm your happiness. We learned that the biggest way to harm your happiness is to remove a bed from one of your settlers, which means that if your happiness is low, the biggest way you can improve your happiness is to make sure all of your settlers have a bed. We learned that removing food does harm your settlement's happiness, but not by much. Even if you have zero food and you don't have any settlers assigned to food, you only lose just over 1% in happiness. Now, I will add a caveat, a caveat to that. I uh, have very high charisma and I have the local leader perk. So I don't know if provisioner lines, if provisioners have anything to do with that. Um, I wouldn't think so because nothing shows up in my inventory. Despite what the game says, having a provisioner doesn't actually share food and water and those kind of resources amongst all your settlers. Having a provisioner only allows you to have access to the junk found in other workshops from any workshop in the game. We also learned that adding additional missile turrets and machine gun turrets and other forms of of defense beyond what you need based upon your food and water added together doesn't actually give you any more happiness. So um, in order to give your settlement the appropriate number of, of defense, you add your food to your water, that gives you a number, and that's how much defense you, has to, you have to have. We know that setting down defense beyond that number does not improve your happiness at all, because we got zero happiness bonus when we put down all of those missile turrets. We learned that ambient noise from generators and from uh, missile turrets and machine gun turrets and other forms of uh, fuel-powered machines, they don't harm your settlement happiness, as, as, uh, happiness. So noise just does not matter. Which means that once you have all of the food you need, and once you have all of the water you need, and once you have 
all of the defense you need and it's fully powered and you have all the beds you need. Once you have those major facets done, the best way, the most efficient way to raise your happiness is to add stores. Each of these stores will give you the highest percentage boost to your settlement's happiness. Dogs are great, but it takes four dogs to give you a 1% happiness boost, whereas it takes a, a booth and a third of a booth to give you 1% happiness boost. So, if you're trying to max out your happiness to get a, a trophy or some sort of achievement, the best way to do it is to throw down a slew of shops, assign your settlers to the, to the shops, cross your fingers and hope for the best. All right, thank you so much for watching. If there are any tests that I did not run that you think I should have included for this video, let me know in the comments and I can always run another experiment and we can find out what happens. But so far, I thought this was a pretty well done experiment and I personally learned a lot. Thank you so much for watching.